Hello and welcome to the third rail. If you follow the channel you might remember this uh, BR50, class 50 of the Deutsche Bundesbahn, Merklin model number 3315, which I added to the collection recently. In today's episode we are going to get this model ready for an upcoming running session. I would normally start by doing a quick visual inspection of the model in various places, but I've already done that in the presentation video. So I'll jump straight to the function test. I've put the model on the track and I'm going to give it a bit of power to see how it behaves there. So turning the throttle up to 100 and we can see that the locomotive moves, which is good. The reverser is working, the locomotive changes direction, but the locomotive is far too slow for the chosen speed setting. I've put it on 150, which is my normal cruising speed during my running sessions, and as you can see, the model is only progressing in a sluggish way. Looks like we have a little issue. At 200 the model should be simply shooting forward or backwards and it's not doing it. Right, we need to fix this. So this type of behavior could be due to um, loose traction tires but there doesn't seem to be any wheel slip. Uh, there's also a, a standout issue which is the resignification of oil around various bearings which could bring them to a seized state. So we're going to check the undercarriage and see what state the various axles are. Uh, first of all I'm going to double check the traction tire. This locomotive has four of them. I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and with this pair of tweezers I'm going to apply some pressure on the traction tire and try and get it to move around the wheel it's attached to. Uh, if it doesn't that's very good. That means that the traction tire still has enough tension and a snug fit around the wheel. There's no problem in this case. I can now check the axles and to do this I'm going to move them from side to side in the direction of their bearing and I'm going to look for resistance. They should be moving freely. The front driving axle is showing some resistance. The center driving axle is practically seized and the last two at the back are absolutely fine. So I already have two axles which I need to uh, address. If I check the uh, leading wheels on the little truck at the front, they are completely seized uh, as well. I cannot shift them or the axle, not even a millimeter. Right, well I've got some work to do. So I'm checking the rods quickly, there's nothing bent, that's good. So I could fix this axle problem with a uh, drop of oil now, but because I've got this problem on the wheel bearings, I'm likely to have the same inside the locomotive in the motor area, so I'm going to have to lift the body and check it out. So on this model the body is attached to the chassis with two mounting screws, which I'm going to have to remove, and hopefully the body should lift right off. So I start with the front one, which is loosening up easily, that's fine. I'm going to put it in a little plastic container on the side to avoid losing it. There we go. And I'll move on to the uh, second screw. Now this one is either stuck due to some oil which would have gone into its hole or 
because it's been over tightened you never know so but after a bit of persuasion it comes out and hopefully the body should now lift right off and it does brilliant so I'm going to have to put the body somewhere where I cannot knock it on the floor by accident there we go and I now have free hands or free access to the motor area so this problem with uh, resinified oil I have on the uh, wheel bearings could also be happening at the ends of the motor armature shaft on each side so I'm going to have to check this and to do this I need to remove the motor cover plate and that starts by removing the motor brushes. I just need to push the motor brush springs out of the brush holders. I should then be able to slide the brushes out of the holders and I'll use the opportunity to check them at the same time. The first one is fine, it comes out easily and it's in good shape. And the second one is the same story, it's the right length, so I'll be able to reuse those. And I can now start to remove the motor plate. So I'll start with the easiest screw at the top right hand corner of the plate. This one comes out easily. And for the second one, I'm going to have to make some space and shift a few cables around a bit in order to um, free the screw head. So I'll remove the uh, initial screw completely. And now I can start shifting things a bit. I have to gently bend back the little interference suppress suppression capacitor at the bottom of the motor plate. It's used as part of a cable management solution that Merklin put in uh, to keep wires away from moving parts. Uh, everything's a bit tight, it's a bit complicated, but with a bit of gentle pushing I'll soon be able to access the slot in the screw head and start and tighten it. There we go. We are doing this quasi real time and now I'm able to start pulling the screw out. Come on. And we are done and that goes in the container again. So I'm going to gently push back the motor cover plate to have a quick peek inside and see if I need to go further. Right and I can see uh, from here that the drum collector on the motor armature is a bit dirty. That's where I'm pointing to with my tweezers now. So I'm going to have to remove the entire thing. This means shifting a few more wires. I'll take care not to cause any damage to the wire insulation or to pull anything off their solder joint. I'd like to avoid getting the soldering iron out on this uh, little maintenance session here. Uh, but with a bit of patience and uh, last cable soon out of the way I should be able to get finally to the motor armature. There we go. So the motor plate lifts off and I'm able to access the armature. I can now check the motor armature. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of graphite deposits on the drum collector on one side. The ends of the shaft are okay. Uh, the inside of the motor housing doesn't look too dirty. So 
we can start doing a bit of cleaning. Uh, I'll start with the motor armature. I'll grab a cotton bird. Uh, there's no need to add any type of product and I'll simply wipe off the graphite deposits on the drum collector. When we go back into focus you'll be able to see that the drum collector soon regains a shiny copper appearance which is what we're looking for. And we can see that the graphite comes out very easily judging by the state of the cotton bird. All right, we are now back to where we should be. Take the last few spots off and I can now take care of the ends of the armature shaft. Same procedure here, I just wipe them off with a dry cotton bud. Uh, nothing's coming off so I don't think there's anything stuck to them. I check the armature teeth as well, there's no problem there. And I can now look inside the motor housing. I'll start by wiping off the inside of the motor plate. There'll be a lot of uh, or a few graphite deposits in there as well and a bit of grease. Again no need for a product in that area. The cover plate is made of plastic and alcohol uh, might be a bit harsh with that uh, material. So I tend to avoid using anything in that area if I can avoid it. And as you can see things come off easily as we go along. I can then look inside the motor housing. Uh, there again I don't use anything especially on this um, type of chassis from that era because any alcohol will attack the paint and you'll end up with red cotton birds. I speak from experience. So a dry cotton bird is all you need and it will take care of removing any deposits of grease or graphite in the area. I'll also uh, wipe the surface of the gears and I'll check for foreign objects between the teeth and I'll check also that no teeth is missing. That would be a bad sign. But in this case everything was alright. Uh, yeah, absolutely no issue. I can now look into freeing my seized axles. So I've got three of them and to free them I'll be using some oil which I've put in a, in a syringe with a thin needle. I'll apply a minute amount of oil on the wheel axle right at the spot where it meets its bearing, like so. I can only do that from one side on this model. I haven't got clearance on the other side, so I might need to do a few passes. Once I've applied the oil, I can wiggle the axles back and forth to try and make a bit of oil penetrate inside the bearing, and then I'll turn the wheels manually to help distribute the oil a bit further. The wheels are turning already a bit better, but we are not quite there yet. So I'm going to have to reapply another drop of oil at the same spots, which I'm doing now. There we go. And then I'll follow the same process, a bit of wiggling. There we go. And the same for the front axle and then I can start turning the wheels. 
and it's already much much better yes we're on the right way uh, we're not quite there yet but it's much better uh, before I go for the next step I'll apply a blob of oil to the other axles that would be part of the standard maintenance procedure there we go I turn the wheels a bit to get some oil already in the right spots and then I look at freeing up the leading wheels on the uh, front truck so they're completely stuck uh, fortunately one side of the axle is accessible so I'm going to start by applying some oil there again same spot where it meets its bearing I remove a drop of oil I've put on the chassis by mistake and then I'll start with a gentle application of force to move the axle and it's starting to move excellent then I'll try and shift it towards the other side in order to reveal the other side of the axle and apply a bit of oil there and I'll carry on rotating the wheels until the axle is moving completely freely and we are there now that I've freed my seized axles I'm going to put the chassis on a bit of absorbent paper and rock it back and forth in order to distribute the fluids further and after a few seconds of the process I can feel that the wheel axles are moving freely I'll turn the locomotive around to check the axles if I wiggle them I can see that they are completely free now excellent so looks like I'm ready for reassembly so we are going to put the motor armature back in its housing and we're going to apply a tiny bit of lithium grease on the ends of the uh, armature shaft to prevent any squeaking and to allow a good movement there we go and once the shaft is back in its housing it's just a matter of putting everything back into place we check the wheels are moving freely once the motor armature has been loosely put back in place just to make sure that everything's in its place and then it's just a matter of reassembling in the opposite order of disassembly. I can now put the motor brushes back in place so it's just a matter of sliding them in their holders gently. It's another fiddly task and pushing the spring over the end there's a little slot that keeps them in place and then we just need to do this on the other side so this one's a bit tricky there's a funny angle and of course if you're not careful you will drop your brush inside the motor housing and in this case i was lucky i could simply fish it out uh, in some cases you have to dismantle everything to get at it but I was lucky this time so with a bit more attention to my grip on the brush I was able to reinsert it and fasten it again last quick check that everything is turning freely okay everything's okay and now I'm simply going to apply a minute amount of oil on the gears themselves there we go I'm going to turn the wheels a bit 
to start distributing the oil but this will take care of itself when we do a quick function test. So I've put the chassis back on the track just to check that everything's working. So we've got a light, that's good, and the model is moving in both directions. It's still making a funny noise, but you can see it's getting, it's going much faster than it used to at uh, speed setting 100 and 150 now. Very good, that's a good start. So I can now reassemble the model before I'll go on to the next step. And this next step consists in giving the locomotive a run around the layout at moderate speed for 10 minutes and do this in each direction. Uh, this will help the fluids to distribute evenly around the gears and the bearings and as the process is going on the motor noise should go down a bit and the driving characteristics should improve at the same time. It's also a good way to check for any other little issue that might have been missed in the previous steps. And after this exercise I now get a much better response at low speed. As you can see I'm barely over 50 on the transformer and the locomotive responds much better to faster throttle settings. I think the job's done. Well, on to the next task. But for now I'd like to thank you very much for watching, it's very much appreciated. I'd also like to thank the existing and recent subscribers to the channel. I'm still surprised that people are interested in my production, so much so that they subscribe to the channel and sometimes give me a like. It's very rewarding and keeps me going. Thanks very much again. Bye for now.